Good morning everyone, good morning guys and girls, hi, hello, my name is EJ and I am back for another narrated art time lapse video just in time for Valentine's Day. Um, so yeah, happy Valentine's Day everyone, it should be right around the corner or should have already occurred <laughs> in that case then yeah, happy belated Valentine's Day. Either way, it, this particular video will be posted right around that time. So yeah, happy Valentine's Day. Hope everyone had a great time for this special holiday. So today we're gonna be looking at a particular illustration that I did with a very much Valentine theme. <laughs> so I think this is a very great illustration to take a look at and see how it was made, uh, see how the process went and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> um, so let's just get started with it, right? Um, so what we're taking a look at in my screen right now, I'm taking a look at it too because I'm watching it while I'm doing my voice recording. Um, what I have are a few photos that I took from MapCrunch, awesome, awesome site um, for artists. It's a wonderful, great visual reference place uh, to go for. It's basically Google Maps is what it is. It's powered by Google Maps. But uh, the interesting thing about MapCrunch is that it takes you to a random place and then you can just start exploring from that random place. And so I put in a few um, specifics on my search term. Um, you see there's the green go button on there. You could just press click on it and it will just take you to a random place. Or you could specify a few attributes as to what you're looking for. In this particular case, I was very much looking for an urban scene to do a photo study slash illustration out of. And so yeah, I ended up somewhere in Italy. This is um, uh, it says it on right. It says it right there. Uh, Genoa, 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 Genoa. I don't know how you pronounce it, but this is definitely in Italy. And so yeah, I was very much enamored with the whole setting of the very small alleyways, which is very predominant in a lot of the European nations, especially very very old. European nations that has had uh, centuries and centuries of history because um, obviously back in the day we didn't have cars we didn't have all these wide streets to accommodate cars everyone was just pedestrian traffic that's what the most predominant type of traffic there was and so you really just have alleyways instead of streets and so um, sceneries like these are always interesting to me especially if they survive all the way to modern times which this particular area obviously has. I'm sure that this has been around for quite some time because they don't have streets. They just have alleyways to get to places. And so I was just enamored with the setting because obviously that's not your typical setting anywhere you are. And so, yeah, uh, I picked this particular area, found a really cool spot that I thought I could have some form of, you know figure put on there which is the stairs this st particular stair area where grandma is i knew that i could draw someone in there uh and the left side being so blank as it is i knew that it would be a great kind of balance for everything that i wanted to do illustration wise because you can see the top right's kind of super busy with all the alleyways and all the buildings back there and then you have this predominantly blank building in the middle all the way to the left and that left wall was kind of attra what attracted me to everything because I, I I thought the left wall was a great balance to the business of the right so picture wise it worked great but then when I started illustrating it I realized that that left wall was just simply too blank and so towards the end of the illustration you see me add a window on there just to have something to kill that blankness so yeah I was trying to do this whole negative space thing and how to effectively use negative space as a balance for everything going on in your painting and it didn't work very well. It was too negative of a space obviously so yeah. But the cool thing that ended up happening is the figures that I decided to put on there. Um, I drew this 
uh, last year around Valentine's Day as well. And uh, you can see the date because I always put the date on my file name so I could organize my file names by date. And you can see that I did this particular illustrate uh, illustration in February 28th of last year. And so, um, I was pretty much just recently fresh off from the whole Valentine's mania. I work in retail, so of course, you know, retail is very holiday obsessed. And one of the holidays that is very big with retail is Valentine's. And so, I was, you know, coming off of that, you know, um, all the craziness and business of that particular holiday. So, it was fresh in my mind, you know, and I thought, hey, let's make like some form of valentine delivery of some sort um and have this kind of like joyous occasion happen and I, I didn't expect to draw grandma grandma just came out of there and i thought that was just really really cool you know like grandma typically doesn't get valentines anymore you know and so it'd be surprising for her to be like oh my husband remembered to like get me something you know because you know how it is with like marriages. Well, I don't know how it is with marriages because I'm not really exactly married. But um, the excitement does fade. I do know that much. <laughs> and so um, having some surprising thing happen, such as what happened to grandma, you know, something unexpected happening to grandma, would just be a pure delight for her, obviously. And so you know she didn't expect to receive a present and she got a present which is flowers uh and so yeah you saw the expression in her face i, I really love the way i drew her I i'm not really good with facial expressions <laughs> i'm not the best at it because i don't practice it enough and lo and behold the way i did her expression was just i thought it was just awesome <laughs> she's just like oh you know which is really powerful very expressive like i got a present expression so it was just really cool like the way how i did her obviously so yeah but enough talking about like where the idea came from and how this particular illustration evolved let's talk about the process that just happened and is going on in this particular illustration so um the process is of course my whole process that I've always done over and over again has been my technique for quite some time now I start out with an initial sketch um, even if it's uh, just an initial sketch from the brain right off the bat or if I'm tracing over a 3d render that I did that I set up um, which is always great doing 3d renders is always great because you're troubleshooting all the lighting and perspective issues in one go from a 3d mock-up so i really highly recommend starting out from a 3d render and then uh the other thing i like to also do is tracing over photos which i typically don't even though a lot of photos are public domain slash free to use uh or under the creative commons uh license i'm still kind of shy away from it i typically just try to you know redo the whole scene in 3d so for example if i see like a photo that i'm really really interested in um uh, instead of just using that photo for my art study slash illustration i just go ahead and just redo it in 3d i i could knock out a 3d blocking session in an hour and have a decent render within an hour and so i figured i'll just do that just to come up with something that i could use for my illustration uh, very rarely do i use photos but i do them uh, every now and then this is one of those interesting ones that would have taken me a while to do a 3d mock-up of it just because of all those things that's going on in the background those alleyways those stairs those buildings that are juxtaposed like differently according to each other and so yeah i mean there was a lot of things going on in this particular illustration and i decided you know what i'm just going to use the photo instead of doing a 3d mock-up of it and so that's what I did. I took a few photos or a few screenshots in different angles of the particular scene. Because you know how like in Google Maps you could rotate your street view and whatnot. And so I did that just to get a few more uh, photos of the area. And then obviously I stitched them together in the very beginning. I traced over it. 
uh, as soon as I got my quick sketch, I basically did my quick coloring, which my quick coloring is I basically take my random mech brush, which creates random shapes, and I set I set it uh, I set the hue variation on on that particular brush so that it would create more hues than the one I choose from. Um, you could see earlier that I had an eight color palette that I just predominantly start out with. Um, so I just lay down these eight colors all over the canvas and then I refine them a little bit more by adding a little bit more nuances to the coloring. Like I would add shadows and add color dodge or I would multiply some areas to get some shadows and I would color dodge some areas to get some highlights. And then as soon as I have this soupy soupy mess, it'll look really horrendous, it'll look very very soupy. Um, it looks just like garbage, <laughs> just a bunch of like really weird stuff. Um, but I knew that I was going to harmonize everything by slowly blending it together with this smudge textured brush. And so that's what I did. I put everything in one layer, smudge everything together. And then as soon as I have smudged everything together, I get a base paint, which I would slowly start to draw my details on, which has already starting. Um, you can see that I'm beginning my detailing with this one particular window. And my detailing process is pretty much a three-step process that goes on all the way throughout the painting. It's basically a three-step process. I delineate my edges, which means I make my edges sharper so that the shapes re clear. So now you can see that there is a window in there. You could see that I um, put some be some beams, some beams. Sorry, I put some beams on the window uh, just to kind of cut up that shape. Um, and so I've. I've Obviously, I needed to like delineate the edges of that those beams just so that they read clearer, you know. So that's a good example of what I do. And then, of course, I accentuate the shadows um, by adding more, by darkening it a little bit more if I needed to darken a bit more. And then I add highlights. So those three type process I repeat over and over again. All throughout the painting, you could see that I started with the window and then I slowly started to migrate towards the door area. And yeah, I just keep doing this over and over again. So that's what you'll see me be doing with the background in the next few minutes. Um, so yeah, just enjoy the show for now. And I'll just come back and talk some more about this painting later.
so as you can see um detailing becomes very very easy after i get my base paint you know because a lot of the information is already there the lighting information the shape information and perspective and whatnot like most of those are already intact in the illustration so you know basically detailing them is like an easy thing to do you know i just basically would call a pick from my canvas and just kind of just work on things that needed a little bit more defining um, a good good point would be the background obviously when i just did those windows you know the windows kind of look just like very very blank and so i figured hey you know let me add a few more details on there just to make it you know slightly more interesting and so i did that um what's really cool though is this bike i really really like what i did with this bike i, I knew that i was looking at a reference for this particular electronic bike and of course looking at references you can get so much more details um, so much more accurate and more very realistic looking in a way and so I was just very grateful that I found the reference in the first place because looking for <laughs> finding references is just very difficult they're just really hard to find but um, Sometimes, you know, typically I would just do a quick sketch. I don't really do a good, nice, clean sketch um, most of the time. Or actually, you know what? I take it back. I do. Either I would do a clean sketch for the whole thing, for the whole scene, and spend an hour on it just doing a clean sketch. Or sometimes I would do a rough sketch. And then later on, like halfway through the illustration, I would do a clean sketch of just the figures, right? And so in this particular case, I really wanted to concentrate, obviously, on the two figures that we have and the bike. I, I don't know why I get so enamored with the bike, but I decided to just go ahead and detail the bike. And so those were basically the three things that I did a really good clean sketch. You saw me do that um, at some point in time earlier uh, where I just basically grayed the whole seen out by adding a layer and putting white on top of it and just putting it in like half opacity and then basically just doing another good clean sketch and then as soon as i get that good clean sketch i would delete that white layer basically and just kind of merge that black or that sorry kind of merge that sketch good sketch layer back into my base paint and kind of smudge things around again Sometimes I would add color in this particular ace. I added more colors before merging them in one layer. But as soon as I do all those quick edits, I merge them in one layer, blend them all again. And then as soon as I get my blended part, then I ended up with another base paint that has a little bit more details. And then I basically just work off of it. Uh, robot is a good example. Um, I'm working on a robot right now. You could tell it's all blended, it's all kind of fuzzy. But a lot more details was in there and really everything just becomes easy because it's just highlights and shadows to just kind of really fully define everything. You can see me do that with the shirt and then with the rest of his arms and the roses or slash flowers. The flowers are very easy. I would just basically take, you know, a green color of some sort and just kind of just plop them down just to kind of denote, you know, their sleeves and then I did the same thing for flowers and so yeah see there you go there's my red and I think I went back there's the leaves yeah <laughs> went by real quick and fast I love this piece I thought this piece was very very well done um, it's very rare that I get a very balanced illustration a lot of my speed paints are hit and miss with a lot of them being a miss <laughs> so but it is speed paints and i you know that's the beauty of speed paint is that to just kind of just capture that quick essence of that very first sit down session with art you know and so uh, a lot of my speed paints are pretty much misses i'm not gonna tell you <laughs> i'm not gonna lie um but this one was definitely a hit. I, I love how everything just kind of ended up together. I love like the very practically blank space of the left side. Um, it balances nicely with like all the buildings on the right with all those 
extra lines going on in there um so yeah i, I think the left side being so predominantly blank and then the right side being busier i think that's a nice balance and then of course the colors is a nice balance and yeah i think this is just a very nicely well balanced piece and there it is thank you guys for watching this with me i hope you learned a thing or two from it uh like and subscribe i will catch you guys in the next video happy valentine's good night